Hey there, what's up everyone? April here. Today we're gonna be talking about a little feature for Power Apps that just went into preview that's gonna help speed up our applications. It's called Named Formulas. Let's take a look at how to enable it and where we might use it. We can use Named Formulas in our Canvas applications. Now first, let's talk about the problem that Named Formulas are trying to solve for us. The problem that named formulas are trying to help us with is slow app load times. And what's one of the number one culprits of slow app load times? That's having too much stuff in your app on start. A lot of times when we're building power apps, we'll put some formulas in our app on start to preload some data when the app is initially loaded. I put in a few examples here where we might wanna set a theme that we'll use throughout our application, maybe get a user's photo that we'll use, their manager, additional profile information, or even preloading some data from our data sources. Now, while all this is necessary, this can lead to a big performance hit if you're doing a lot on this app on start using the set function. Now the set function is what allows us to create what's called a global variable, meaning it's a way for us to store a local value in our Power App that can be used throughout the application. And you might've seen some of my other videos where I tried to give you some tips and tricks for how you can optimize your app on start to make your app load faster. Like instead of doing what I have here, where I have all of my set functions one after the other separated by a semicolon, I could wrap these inside of a function called concurrent. Now by doing this, this changes the way that these formulas behave out of the box. By default, your formulas will run sequentially. So what that means in this case here, it would first have to go look at this function to set a background color to black, wait till that's done evaluating, then move on to the next one to set a color for the text of white. And then once that's done, it can go move on to the next one of getting the user profile photo. And then finally, it can move to the last function of getting the user's manager. So you can easily see how if you have a lot of different logic in here, especially if you're preloading data, say thousands of records from your databases, that this could take a long time when you're initially loading your app. So that concurrent trick that I was showing you forces those actions to run in parallel instead, and it does save you some time performance-wise. But that's still not ideal. That's where named formulas come in. Named formulas give us a much more performant way to set local data that's static inside of our applications. So that's gonna be one of the biggest benefits that you'll see of leveraging named formulas is to speed up your app load time. In fact, switching off of using the app on start and a bunch of global variables into using name formulas can save up to 80% in your load times. Now, obviously making our apps run faster is always a great thing, but before we dive into how to set up and start using these name formulas, let's talk about where we would and wouldn't use them. We've established that it's a replacement for your app on start in these global variables. However, it wouldn't fit every use case. This is for those cases where you're using global variables or collections to set static data, data that's not going to change and you're not going to need to update throughout the use of your application. So that's why the examples that I have pulled up here are great use cases. Things like setting themes for your application, getting static user profile information, or even static data like a list of states to populate a dropdown or something like that. But in those cases where you do need to be able to change the data throughout the state of your app, then you would not want to use named formulas. That's not the use case for that. So we'll take a look at a few examples, but first let's talk about where we would enable this because right now it's not widely rolled out. It is a preview feature that you'll need to enable. To enable preview features, you'll go into your Canvas app, click on the settings button and go to upcoming features. Under the preview tab, scroll all the way to the bottom or use the search and look for the named formulas option. So we'll toggle this to on, and you'll see that it's letting us know it needs to do a full page refresh before it can apply the feature. So we're gonna click okay here, get out of our settings, and we'll save our application. And we're gonna close out of that and go back into it so that we can see this new named formulas capability. So I'll go back into the edit mode of my app and we'll take a look at how it works. Once you enable that feature, if we go to your app tab in the tree view in the left-hand side, and you go to your properties dropdown in the upper left-hand side, you should see that we have a new property that we can configure called formulas. So this is where we can define the name formulas for our app. So let's go take a look at what I was doing in my app on start. So I was using all these different set functions. 
So what I'll do is actually remove all of these from my app on start. And I'll probably see a lot of errors on my app because I'm using that throughout the app. But we're gonna fix them by switching to named formulas. So now I'll go back to our properties dropdown and switch back to that formulas property. And I'm actually gonna paste in all of those set formulas, but we need to tweak them because we aren't using global variables here. We're gonna use named formulas. And to define a named formula, we simply put in our desired property name. So I can remove all of this set for this background color object. And then instead of a comma between the item and the value, we can replace that with an equal sign. And that is a named formula. So I can just repeat this process for all of these set functions. So we can say text color equals, or remove that parenthesis, and we still separate them out with semicolons. So if we're doing multiple named formulas, we'll still do that. And then we'll replace this one. So we'll say user photo equals that call to the Office 365 users connector. And then finally for the manager, and that's really as easy as it is to define named formulas. Now I can use these values throughout my application. So when you're using named formulas, you have to enable that feature and make sure you're putting them in this formulas property and not trying to put them in the app on start because putting them in the app on start is going to negate any potential savings that we might have for load times because these named formulas in that formulas property operate inherently different than the on start property. The nature of these named formulas are actually what allow them to be independent and they can actually let your app finish loading before they're evaluated. And that's where the big time savings comes from. And we would reference these name formulas just like we would if we had a set variable in there. So right here in this label, if we go to its fill property, in the formula bar, I would simply put the name of my name function, which is BG color. So that was a quick and simple overview of name formulas. They are in preview right now, but hopefully they'll be rolled out GA soon. I would encourage you all to start evaluating your power apps that you have out there that have a lot of stuff in the app on start where you're preloading some static data and that might have slower load times and move those up your list to upgrade when name formulas become generally available. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, do me a favor, click that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video. Hey, before you go, I got all kinds of Power Apps videos, so check out some of these.